everyone, welcome back to another episode of Brown People Problems. And today we will be continuing our little series on brown people and money. Last episode, we talked about three truths about brown folks and money um, and personal finance. And in particular, in that episode, we explored some different ways culture can impact our relationship with money. So if you haven't checked out that episode, definitely do so before you listen to this one. For today's episode, we'll be focusing on financial cost versus mental or psychological cost of something. Now, this is um, a topic and this is a topic that has been really close to my heart for some time and really wanted to unpack today uh, how so many of us can sacrifice our mental well-being for the favor of our financial well-being. Now, if you're listening and you identify as an immigrant yourself or as a child of immigrant or as a person of a color who maybe doesn't come from a lot of financial means, I want you to take a pause here and just reflect on this concept of financial cost versus psychological cost and how this has shown up in your family of origin, how this continues to show up for you in your life today and in particular what have been the times in your life when you or those around you have sacrificed convenience or their mental health or their emotional well-being and favored saving money in that circumstance or favored the financial cost of something now the scene that really comes to mind for me is um, for those of you listening, if you're familiar with this internet comedian, Jess Rain, there is an episode he does, I think it's called Brown Parents and Money. And there is a scene where the mom and dad are, you know, just uh, rifling through coupons and sales. Um, yeah, through coupons to try and find the best deal on something. And I thought, you know, he has such a way of capturing um, the reality of immigrant families so well, but that in particular, I thought really hit a chord with so, so, so many of us. And not that there's anything wrong with parents being frugal or trying to find deals where they can, but that is a visual that really came up for me with this episode. So definitely take a moment and reflect on what has the focus been like in your family of origin, in your life now around financial cost versus psychological cost. And for those of you who are unclear perhaps on that definition, let's break this down for a moment. So financial cost is very obvious what it sounds like, like it is a monetary cost of something. So $5, $10, $20, that's the financial cost of something. Mental cost or psychological cost is a little bit different. So mental cost is the effort, time, energy, internal resources required to purchase something. In economics, they uh, define mental cost as the measure, as a way to measure the stress of having to think about a transaction. So you can count mental cost as also uh, being part of just planning for a certain transaction. So that is monetary cost, financial cost versus psychological or mental cost of something. So say for a moment that you need a new sweater and you go shopping for this sweater. Well, you know what? It's summer in Canada, so let's make it a little bit more relevant. Um, let's say you need a new uh, dress or a new shirt and you go shopping. Now, you prioritize shopping for the best price. The mental cost in this uh, example is the time, effort, energy that it's going to require for you to go from place to place to place, store to store to store, to find that perfectly priced sweater instead of buying the one that you already found at shop number two and you like it and it feels good, right? I don't know if anyone has ever done this, but there was a time when, you know, I would like something at a store and I would pull it out of the rack that it was on and find another really um, unused rack to hide it on so I could go shopping for a better price and then come back. And if, if I couldn't find anything better, come back and purchase that. 
So that's an example that really comes to mind for me. This need um, for us to maybe perhaps keep looking for something better and better and better instead of just purchasing what felt has felt good enough. Another example of this could be tracking down a promo code or a coupon to save a few bucks. Um, in that circumstance, you may be wanting to pay like a higher mental cost for the exchange of low material cost. These are some of the smaller everyday examples, but a bigger, more impactful example can be reluctance to leave a toxic home um, because you don't have enough saved up or you don't have as much as you'd like have saved up to move out or you're settling for a smaller place even though you can afford a bigger place but you're settling for a smaller place um even though it doesn't really speak to you or bring you joy because you don't want to spend more and so in these circumstances some are big some are small we end up making decisions that favor finances over convenience and mental well-being quite a lot now let's talk about some stats from the mental money and mental health policy institute so some stats show us that about 46 percent of people with debt also have a mental health diagnosis and 86 percent of these people say that their debt makes their mental health issues worse now there's certainly a relationship between our mental health our stress and our financial health often we will sacrifice our mental health you know i'll I'll, stay in the smaller apartment because I don't want to spend so much on say something that's slightly bigger or I'll stay with my I'll continue to stay with my parents even though it is terrible for my mental health um but because I don't have saved up as much as I would like or I'm valuing my financial health over my mental health so these two are certainly related and I think one thing that I have learned in my you know sort of research and my relationship with money over time is that we cannot have a financial but good financial health without good emotional health so let's talk about how these two are related now when we're struggling with stress or mental health it definitely makes it harder for us to earn so it might make it difficult to show up at work it might make it difficult to engage at your job it might make you more likely to make errors that you wouldn't usually make, right? Thereby affecting the quality of your work. When we're struggling with stress and mental health, it also affects our ability, of course, to manage money. It impacts our spending. It impacts our ability to ask for help. So let's take a look. Let's break this down for a moment. Managing money. So when we are struggling emotionally, we can have a hard time making even smaller or mediocre better money decisions that will amount to big changes or being a big influence but in something as small as we might find that we're splurging maybe a lot more on things that we don't want because i deserve it i'm going through a crappy time you can definitely find yourself you know cutting down on the smaller expenses that okay maybe i won't have my daily coffee from outside but then when we're really emotionally upset we might find ourselves making bigger purchases that really negates the effort of cutting down smaller purchases so you might be spending a lot on uh, on shoes or a bag that you may regret later so a lot of impulsive spending there's definitely a relationship between you know like addictive behaviors um and poor mental health and addictive behaviors can often even just look like it doesn't have to be you know alcohol or drugs it can just look like overeating your relationship with food and spending your money so poor mental health can contribute to poor money management right not being able to manage your money the way that we would like um this can cause in turn more stress more anxiety and you can see that this becomes like a perpetual cycle so if my mental health is suffering i may not make the best decisions with my money which then continues to make me stressed out about the fact that i'm not able to save up as much as i want or i'm not able to you know meet my financial goals which creates more stress which then makes us more likely to have poor money management habits and it becomes like this vicious loop that just feeds on itself these are certainly some very common ways that a poor mental health can impact our relationship with money and 
I definitely see a lot of these, you know, in my life at once upon a time. And if we are emotionally struggling or if we are not happy, we're going to find ways to convince ourselves to buy that happiness. And that continues to keep us in a stressed out place. If finance is one thing that's limiting you from creating a better space for yourself. This is important to think about because often we don't value enough the psychological cost of something. We are very good at valuing the financial cost of something, the monetary cost of something, but not so much on what it's costing us uh, what it's costing us psychologically, what it's costing us emotionally, um, and what it's costing us in time of in, in terms of like energy. So another example that you know comes to mind for me is driving around from grocery store to grocery store to look for the best prices on something. And while the you know the effort really here is to find the best monetary price, you may be saving a few dollars on this trip, but what really you are spending is energy, time, and your mental well-being and like money time and energy on a daily basis are very finite these are not infinite resources and i think and perhaps maybe that's where the disconnect is that we assume that we have infinite energy and infinite emotional resilience and so we're very good and we're very um we're very easy to spend it but it's like money if you spend too much money that you don't have, you accrue debt, right? And if you spend the energy that you don't have, you accrue debt in terms of, you know, in the principles of energy conservation. We can feel more tired, we can feel more irritated, we can have poor sleep, it's too much on our body, and we can feel the impacts of it later on or even next day. Especially with, um, in my experiences with brown folks personally and professionally there's certainly an element of this coming from immigrant families and rightfully so there's of course a huge focus on being financially frugal counting every single dollar and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and but there comes a time when the habits that helped us before are no longer helpful for us and what it calls us to do is to reflect on what we're doing is it still is it still helpful? Is it still serving its purpose? Or am I accruing this mental debt, this energy debt for the purposes of, for the purposes of getting the best price for something? Now, I think we cannot talk about this topic without talking about privilege. There is certainly an element of privilege here. Um, not all of us are privileged enough, certainly not, to value mental cost over financial cost. And this applies especially to those of us who are immigrants, who are children of immigrants, who are, you know, sole earners and like families of two, three, four, five. This is a privilege to be able to value mental well-being over financial well-being. So please do not feel bad if this is your reality. You are not doing anything wrong. It just means that your reality is different and a lot more nuanced. But we're talking about this because for a lot of children of immigrants and folks in general, we may have a little bit more privilege now in this department, especially for children of immigrants. We have, we may have a little more privilege here being afforded that thanks to the sacrifices of our parents, but we absorb a lot of these practices from our families of origin and we continue to participate in these practices without necessarily thinking about them critically and without necessarily reflecting, is this helpful for me? You know, does this serve a, a purpose for me? It certainly did for my parents and I'm very, very thankful for this practice. But how does this fit into my life today? Because our realities, even if we're immigrants, our realities can change over time, over the years. And now we may be able to afford this privilege, right? Maybe not with every single thing. Maybe, you know, we don't have the privilege of paying for a business class flight for convenience versus an economy flight, and that's totally okay. Maybe our threshold for this privilege is smaller. So maybe our threshold for this privilege just looks like, 
you know what, I'm going to go into one store and if I like a sweater or if I like a shirt, if it fits what I want, which is like the color, I like the feel, like the quality, then I'm not going to shop too much around. I am going to get what I like because in shopping around and saving 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars, it is costing me a lot of my time. It's costing me a lot of my energy. Or next time we feel tempted to stay in a situation that is not good for our mental health, whether it's a bad job or a bad home environment or say we're renting a place, but we decide to rent it with roommates because it costs a little bit more to get a place just by ourselves. Um, maybe it can be helpful for us to think about what is the psychological cost of this and you may choose to pay the psychological cost that's totally okay but as long as i think you're aware that uh, i am spending that psychological energy and that mental energy and i'm okay with paying this mental cost we're gonna be okay with paying the mental cost for a few things not always for others it is so 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 common for brown folks time and time again to really value money over everything else and it's that's not to say that there's something wrong with that or we're passing a judgment but i th wonder if there's something to be said about being able to be mindful of this practice and and being conscious of it in some circumstances it certainly does pay well to think of our financial well-being of course and you know the financial cost of something but in other circumstances, it may actually pay well to think of our emotional cost of something and how it's impacting us psychologically. Because if we continue to stay, for example, in situations that are no longer serving us or are bad for our mental health, yes, it's costing us in terms of mental energy and psych there's psychological cost to it in the present. But it can be argued that there's also a financial cost that in the future. So you may be spending more money on therapy in the future because you're still, because you know this experience has impacted you in some negative ways. So you're spending more money in the future in therapy, or you're maybe spending more money just shopping for yourself because you want to make yourself feel better, and that again impacts your ability to meet your financial goals. So this is that perpetual cycle that we were talking about earlier. So that is a quick tidbit on. Uh, mental cost versus financial cost and hopefully some of this resonates with you definitely let me know your thoughts about this episode but what I personally find helpful for myself is next time I find myself find myself at a, a junction of um, financial cost versus mental cost it's helpful for me to ask myself okay you know there's a monetary cost to this thing what is the financial cost of this how much anxiety is this causing me how much time is this costing me? What is an hour or half an hour of my time worth? So if I am getting takeout for dinner and the delivery fee is 99 cents, but the restaurant is close by, I might some days decide to just go pick it up and save myself that delivery fee and that service fee, which will maybe amount to be two or three dollars. Or sometimes I may not because I don't have the energy, I don't have the bandwidth and I'm busy doing something else. Those that 15, 20 minutes of me going and picking something up and coming back is going to take away from my time to do something else. And it's also important to know that there's no one right answer to any of this, that our responses to this is going to change with every situation and with every decision that we're going to make. However, something to think about maybe that we don't think about enough all right that is all for today thank you for joining me on another episode on uh, brown people and money series i will have linked down below the statistics from money and mental health policy institute for those who are curious uh, about looking into this a little bit more and i'll see you in my next episode if you haven't listened to last week's episode on how culture impacts your beliefs about money definitely do that next Thank you for being here and stay tuned for our disclaimer. The guest and the host of Brown People Problems do not offer individualized therapeutic or medical advice and our conversations should not be interpreted as such. This podcast is not a replacement for therapy. This podcast exists for educational purposes only. Please consider your circumstances and engage with the content mindfully.